All right, everybody, in my first series of videos, I showed you how to go about combining your PPC and SEO data. But what I didn't show you yet is how to combine those, that data to show insights to your clients or your teams. So let's go do that now. As you can see, I've already joined a bunch of different uh, data together. You can see it here, um, but that's in a previous video, so don't worry about it. What we wanna do today is start you off with the basics. And the basics are basically to take your search query report from paid and bring in your search terms. And what I wanna do is create a scatter plot of all of the search terms that we had gotten any traffic on over the last year, let's just say. And I got my lonely dot here because now I got search term in detail. I need to create my X axis. I prefer to make it conversions. The next thing I like to do is then to make ranking my Y axis. So I'm going to use my stat rankings. I'm going to grab rank, make it my Y. So now what you've got is a scatter plot with a bunch of keywords. The dots furthest to the right are the ones that are converting the most. The lower they are on the line, the higher their rank. The higher up they are, the lower their rank. Now you're probably seeing rank 300. Why are you pulling top 300? I'm actually not. The thing you've got to be careful of is Power BI is mostly a tool for sales and finance people. So when they see a number, by default, they think you want to add, subtract it, multiply, etc. This is why your rankings are defaulting to sum. They want to add them up. So if you rank number one, number 100, and number 150, they're gonna add that up to 251. Um, and that's not what you want. So you can tell it not to summarize. If you do it, there's a good chance that that might end up breaking your visual. So what you do instead is you go, actually, you know what I want? I just want the minimum ranking. And now what you'll see is my axis on the left-hand side is going to a more traditional uh, one through 100 ranking. Another thing that I personally like to do is I like to make the size of my bubble something that's gonna to matter to the client, like how much they're spending. So now that you've got all that data in your data sheet, let me show you how to actually interpret it and how to walk a client through what you're seeing. So I might say to my client, last year for the word Seer Interactive, your brand, you spent $50,000 to get 20,000 conversions and you rank number one. There's not a whole lot you can do with that. So I right click and exclude it. And as I start excluding, you start seeing the, all the kind of bunched up bubbles over here start getting more and more uh, desperate. So then I look at Will Reynolds. Okay, Will Reynolds, last year you spent $35,000 on that, got those conversions, you rank number one, exclude. And now what you start to see is look for the bubbles that are not flat on this line and it'll tell you, hey, this is rank number six. So Sear ranks number six for Adobe Analytics and client, it drove you 627 conversions last year. Then I start to have a dialogue around, well, what's the value of those conversions? If the client says, actually, those are really helpful for me, those are great leads for me, then I might go ahead and turn that into a strategy and say, well, let's look at all your Adobe keywords uh, by themselves to see if there's chances to move that from a six to maybe a three or a two or a one. I know it's a brand, so it's gonna be hard to do that. Just bear with me, it's a fake data set. So then you just kind of keep going through and you start looking for things like, I love finding outliers like this, where I can say to a client, hey, did you know that you ranked number 20 for the word PPC? But actually last year, you got 231 conversions on that and spent $11,000. So what I'm able to now tell the client is, well, isn't that a keyword you might wanna move from 20 to maybe two or three or four? And then once I kind of go through this process, building out buckets and strategies for keywords, then we can actually get into doing real SEO and start saying, well, how do we build the content? How do we understand what other derivatives of words we could go after? Now that I've taught you how to look at a Power BI file, in my old videos, you can see how to join them. But in this video, I'm showing you how to find opportunity and how to talk about that opportunity to your clients. Now, I know there's a couple of people out there that might say a few things about the way that I'm looking at this data. They might say three different things. One, Will, you're, you're confusing mobile and desktop. You've got it all mixed up together. And I would say, you're right, congrats. Go make a video and you figure out and share with all of us how to go about breaking that out in a way that's meaningful. Some other folks will say, well, Will, the intent is different. 
When people search for a word and they're open to clicking on paid, their intent is very different sometimes in certain words than SEO. And I would tell you, you're right too. Go find a way to fix it for us and we're all ears. Um, and then the last one is sometimes around location and how in different locations, people might search differently or react differently to paid versus SEO data, so you or paid versus SEO listings. So you might not be able to just kind of use one for the other. And I would say, you're probably right too. So if you find a solution to that, please by all means share it with me. I'll share it with everybody on the channel. But for now, I'm finding that these conversations are creating breakthrough insights for our clients. So we're gonna keep doing it and running as fast as we can towards it. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing you on the next video.